good win last week at Monroe. Um, tough venue, tough tough road trip just in general. I mean, it's a seven hour bus ride there, um, and just a tough place to play that had been hard for our program. You know, going into like I talked about last week, going into that game, the last six trips to Monroe for Troy, we were one in five. Right, so not an easy place to go get a win. Uh, and and so really, and the one win was a 35 to 27 win where we had to get a pick in the end zone to close the game out at the end in 2018. So really glad to get a convincing win on the road in a tough environment to play um, in regards to just travel and the situation there. So happy for the win. Um, did not feel like we played up to our full standard. Um, I, I thought at times we were a little bit loose we got a little bit, um, I think, careless with some things. And I don't think we played our our best football and was really disappointed in some things that we did that I didn't think matched what our standard has become around here. So a lot to improve upon and clean up. Um, announcing the players of the week. Offensive player of the week uh, did a really good job. Um, up front for us, Grant Betts. Defensive player of the week split to two people. Not really hard to figure that out who – Probably, but Javon Solomon uh, had four TFLs, four sacks. Um, I think he broke a record that was OC's record. Um, so Javon and then Richard Jubinor also had four TFLs and three and a half sacks. Both of those guys wreaked havoc in the backfield all day. Um, both of them were also awarded the Senior Bowl Co-Defensive Players of the Week by the Senior Bowl and Jim Nagy down there, that group. So uh, big time performance by both of them. Um, Special Teams Player of the Week was Robert Cole. Uh, did a great job in the punting game for us. Uh, averaged um, a net punt of 43 yards. Um, so really, really helped us flip the field in some situations Saturday. Uh, job takers of the week, defensively, this guy's shown up a couple weeks now, Kenny Reedy. Offensive job taker of the week, Jamison Holcomb. And special teams job taker of the week, LJ Green. LJ has had a good last five or six weeks um, and proud of his growth. He's currently redshirting, but I think um, he's shown the last six weeks or so that he's taken the strides to make himself into the player we believe he can become. Um, Nathan Harris, John Johnson Service Award, AJ Pierce. Uh, did a lot out in the community last week. And the Corey McCuller Spirit Award goes to Jarris Williams. It was his first game back in the travel roster as a healthy, able-bodied participant in the game plan. But really, he brought tremendous energy to the sideline and to the team all week. And then the workout warrior of the week is Tim Roberson, another freshman DB like LJ, who I've seen take significant strides. And he's utilizing the red shirt the right way um, in developing while he's waiting. So he's working while he's waiting really well. Fast forward, um, next game, Louisiana Lafayette, um, really tough opponent. Um, we had to come back big from, from down last year to get the win there last year. They are extremely impressive personnel-wise. On the offensive and defensive line in particular, uh, they, they look like one of the best teams in our league, and it's not even close. Um, so we've got a lot of work to do to get prepared against a quality opponent who has been, I think, to maybe six straight bowl games. So they've got a winning tradition in history, have been winning for a while. Um, remind our guys, we have just been to now, we'll get to go to two straight bowl games as of this year. So it's not like uh, we've been winning forever. They've been winning longer than we have. So we've got we to gotta get ready to play the game the right way against a quality opponent who I have a lot of respect for the players and the staff over there. So with that, open up to questions. Hey, John, it's Jamal at uh, WSBA Montgomery. Just really quick about this Louisiana team. Obviously, um, prior to you guys winning the, the West last year, they had kind of been on a run there where they had gone to the, the conference championship game in a string of years. Obviously, this isn't probably the year that, they, that they've that they wanted to have, but uh, do you still see glimpses and pieces of like that championship culture in this team? Um, and, and just speaking of how it's going to be tough to beat them this weekend. Yeah, without question, you hit on it. For several years in a row, they were the, the representative in the conference title game from the West. Um, and, yes, you still see a lot of that. 
what I mentioned with the offensive and defensive line. I think really high level football teams went up front. Like everybody's got some skill players. The great teams have to have O linemen and D linemen that can win games in certain situations. And these guys, offensive line, are very complete when you watch them. Defensive line, they're big and strong and physical. And so those are really – I think they've got great players all over the field, but where they are separated, in my opinion, from the rest of the league, when you look at their personnel and how they play the game, is they are big, physical, and athletic on the front. And they look – just to be candid with you, they look different than a lot of people in our league. And um, so we've got we've to be really good at the line of scrimmage. Um, doesn't mean you always have to, like, just move people – way off the ball, but you have to cover people up and not allow negative plays on offense. And then defensively, you've got to get off of blocks. you got to beat a block because they're going to get on you and try to sustain blocks. So um, that's the that's the part of their team where when you watch the tape, they still look not like a, a quality team, but like a conference title team to me. Coach Nick Brooks with uh, WTBY down in Dothan. I, I looked at Javon and um, Richard's numbers sack-wise. Uh, you guys are one of only two teams in the country to have two players in the top 20 of sacks. Just kind of talk about how important it is to have two people that can disrupt the timing for the quarterback like that. Um, so if one of them gets double teamed, obviously the other one's going to go free or only one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, both um, guys are talented. You know, I, I mentioned on the Sunbelt Media deal earlier, last year when we got here December of 21, they both were playing Bandit, which is our boundary outside linebacker. A lot of people call it the Jack. Um, so they were both playing there, and we had um, – we had – you know, Javon was kind of coming off a little bit of an injury the year before, and so he didn't go through spring or really summer full go – and we got to about middle of last season. We weren't performing really good on third down after about six or seven games on defense. And we started putting both of them on the field on third down. And then we got to the off season, and I'm like, guys, if we don't get both of these guys in the field, like when one of them is standing next to me on the sideline watching the game, I feel like an idiot because I'm like, I can watch the game pretty good. I need them to go play football. And so uh, when you – Javon, you know, was very selfless and – change positions, move to field end. He's playing more on a three-point stance, which is probably not what he's going to do when he goes and plays pro football. And he's uh, playing some four-eye at times, which is definitely not what he's going to do when he plays pro football. But he's doing it for the team. And he's doing it because Rich allows Rich to stay a bandit, Javon goes to field end, and now you got both guys on the field. And which side do you want to chip or which side do you want to nudge or which side do you want to slide the protection in? And all of a sudden you got to make some decisions – and they complement each other well. They're very good friends. They live together up until this year. Uh, so just both, man, really proud of them. And uh, I, I was telling somebody earlier, I woke up, I was got to the office this morning at like 5.30. I woke up at like 3-something thinking about how we're going to rush the passer next year without him. Um, and uh, I'm, not I'm not making Javon's declaration for him, but he he's, he's going to be a draft pick probably. And so – uh, those guys, um, when when it's their time to move on, uh, my mind's already on a little bit of who's going to rush the passer because I know I can't do it. Hey, Coach Young. They were, uh, they were obviously able to move the ball on you guys, but you were able to get stops in the red zone, block field goals, stuff like that. And over the last probably six games, the third and fourth downs, you guys have been pretty dominant on defense. How big is that, and um, what's the key to being so good on third and fourth down? <clears throat> yeah, I think it starts with knowing who you are. So what do you do well? What are your strengths and weaknesses? Uh, what personnel can you use um, to give you maybe better rushes or better cover downs in the secondary? And then what do they do well? You know, if they got a mobile quarterback, is it some quarterback draw stuff or some quarterback run game stuff or – what are the things that they do that can present problems for you? What route combinations? Um, and then it comes to situational awareness. Like we've talked a lot around here about being situational masters. On third down, third and one is different than third and six, and it's that's different than third and twelve, 
and that's different than third and 18, right? So how you play a call changes a little bit based upon down in distance. And um, so I think our guys have done a nice job of just kind of getting into the game plan, knowing who we are, knowing who the opponent is, and then um, on third downs and then knowing in the situation. I, to your point, I did not think we played very well in the open field at times the other day. I was really disappointed, I thought, was just some of our uh, coverage leverage issues that we had. Um, gave up too many leaky yards in the run game at times. Um, I just – I was I was not – I didn't feel like we played to our standard in some areas. So, but – uh, all in all, I think on third down we've we've shown improvement from last year. Coach, it's Jamal again. Um, obviously, we know how talented your wide receiver group is, but to see the running back group uh, be as diverse as it was on Saturday, you had Asa scoring a touchdown. You saw Damian get in the end zone. How big is that for your team when it's not always having to rely on Kamani to pick up the, the tough yards and you can you can spell them every now and then? Yeah, Kamani's a great player, but DT's had some moments this year. I think back to his long run at Georgia State. That's one. You know, he's had some – I challenged him last week because I felt like the previous game he did not run behind his pads or with great leverage. So I challenged him last week in the parking lot when he was walking in one day. I said, hey, I need you to run angry. Like, don't be – he be, you know, be a be a big physical bruiser like you are. Don't be a don't be a pretty boy. And so he ran behind his pads and was more physical. And obviously had the touchdown catch that was the first drive, first touchdown I should say. Um, and then Asa had, had did a really nice job on the swing pass and getting in the end zone. That was a great run by him uh, on the ball that Goose threw him. And then uh, it was nice to get Goose in the game. The other guy that was great to see him score on Saturday was Tay Meadows. All right, so. Tay's a redshirt freshman that walked on here um, from Hanley High School in Ro Roanoke, Alabama, which is my mother-in-law's alma mater. And um, Tay has come here, been a terrific worker, and to see him score the last one, you know, you're not necessarily trying to score at that point in the game. That wasn't really the goal per se, but we were trying to get some young guys some work and um, give them – they put a lot of work in, so give them the opportunity to run some things that are normal offensive – stuff and to see him get in the end zone um, and just play uh, well was was gratifying. Coach Nick again, um, is it senior day this week or, or this Saturday for you guys? Yes, it is. Um, just kind of talk about this group of seniors that you guys have that you guys will kind of be celebrating um, prior to this game. Yeah, I think it's 20 guys we got going through senior day. Um, you know, guys have made significant contributions to the team all across that list of guys um, and really are a big part of, you know, getting this program back to where we want it to be from a consistency standpoint. Um, they, they've seen some hard times. Uh, fun for me is, you know, I was here. I personally recruited Grant Betts um, and was here. I, I remember Gunnar Watson and his family coming on campus a lot when I was here, and he was committed to us when I was here. Um, so a lot of a lot of these guys, O'Shea Fletcher, I recruited him personally. You know, I was I think O'Shea's only offer initially for a while because he went to Randolph in Huntsville, which he was the first Division One signee for football out of his high school. Um, and so then the other guys like Del Pettis and Reddy Stewart, those guys are from my neck of the woods. Um, just proud of what they've accomplished. Um, I'm so grateful for them allowing us to coach them and. Uh, I think sometimes, like, you just assume that players are supposed to take your coaching, but, like, they have to open up to you and accept when you bring something new and different like we brought when we got here two years ago that might have been very uncomfortable. Um, man, their willingness to do whatever it took to be their best and then in turn help our program be its best, uh, I, I just will forever be indebted to them because of their embracing wanting to be great and wanting to pursue the best they can be. And um, and just I'll remember this group forever, man. They are special. And what they've done these last two years um, I think is um, very memorable. And I think for them to see how they started maybe their time here to how they finished, they can be extremely proud of what they're leaving um, in regards to their legacy um, and their, you know, just 
their mark on this program. And, and I think sometimes what maybe what they're leaving the young guys with, you know, we talk a lot. When you leave, what will the people that are still left in the building say about you? And so I think we talked about that this summer with the guys. And so um, I think those guys, when you say the name Del Pettis or Reddy Stewart or uh, Richard Juvenor or Deshaun Stoudemire or Clayton Allendyke or Grant Betts, like, wow, those are absolute dudes that have changed this program. With that okay. in mind, from your from your chair, can you speak to the impact that Larry Blakeney had on the program? Man, I'm glad uh, Barry's here to announce. Remind me, it's Larry Blakeney Day, um, and it's it's funny when I when I took the job, um, somebody that didn't really know how much I knew Coach Blakeney brought up Coach Blakeney's name and his history and tradition here, and I was like, well, yeah, the field's named after him for a reason. You know, he was. He was here for the run he was on and did it at an extremely high level, sustained success for such an impressive amount of time. But the thing I love most about Coach Blakeney is what you hear his former players say. Uh, I'll get emotional because I, I admire Coach Blakeney because of what you hear his former players say about him. And, um, man, what a, what a stud. Uh, if, if somebody would even mention that, like, I care about our players as much as Coach Blakeney, I'd be, like, feel like I've reached my my pinnacle of what I could do. Because we have um, the Letterman fish fry in the summer or in the spring during a baseball game, and Coach Blakeney's come back for it. And, man, to, to see the looks on his players' faces and to hear them talk about how much he loved them and cared about them and then would do anything for them, like – uh, is the ultimate compliment as a coach. And so for us to be able to honor Coach Blakeney Saturday, man, um, I'm just overcome with joy um, and have so much respect for for him and um, excited to see him and Janice on Saturday. Um, I've had the privilege since being back to spend some quality time with Larry on a handful of occasions and um, just humbled to, to even – serving a role that he served in and knowing how he did it and the impact he made on so many people. Coach, uh, I've got one more. Just um, talking about, obviously, the, the next goal in mind. Obviously, you clinched the West Division, which is probably <coughs> you know up there. Um, obviously, you want to be able to host the conference championship game, but that doesn't come without a win on Saturday and so on and so forth. How do you guys, I guess, um, look at look at it? You know, how are you checking off the boxes? You know, what does that process look like? Yeah, glad to clinch. It's nice to know that we're going to play in the championship game. Um, I, complacency will kill you too, and my biggest fear is that there becomes a little bit of a relaxed vibe, which I can promise you there ain't going to be around me, um, but. Um, I'm excited to know that we're going to get to play in that game and get that opportunity. That's still down the road. And I'm really – like, my focus isn't even so much on winning to get home field. It's just winning to show the respect to the game that their game deserves and our players deserve. And um, so much – it takes so much to win. Like, it's not easy to win. And so, I'm just very – uh, I feel like on guard, um, like we talked about, staying, staying two is something we're going to say some this week. It's, you know, you're in the military and uh, most of the attacks that happen are at dusk or dawn. And Coach Witt and I were talking about this yesterday. Man, our guys got to stand two. Like, they got to be ready. Like, you can't relax now. And so, um, just excited about um, playing this game and giving everything we have to this game and then – then after that, we'll worry about the next game. And that, that maybe sounds like coach speak, but I just am so focused on how do we get as prepared as we can be to, to play this game the best we can.